Hello, I am back in the Beginner's Guide to Machine Learning with ML5. And today I am continuing this series and I'm going to do a few videos about something called KNN classification. And the thing that I'm going to use it and apply it to is building your own teachable machine. Now this is the Teachable Machine Project from Google, Google Creative Lab, demonstrating this idea of transfer learning, taking a pre-trained model and using it as a foundation to train a new model on top of. Now, you might be thinking, like, didn't you already make these videos? There was that whole thing with the feature extractor and classification and regression and saving the model. Yes, you are right. I did already make those videos. However, I'm gonna basically do the exact same thing again, but with a slightly different technique, and that technique is called KN classification, which has some advantages. There are pros and cons to both of these techniques, and at the end, maybe we can sort of wrap up and look at why you might pick one over the other. But the main advantage, one of the main advantages of KN classification is it's sort of training, the training the model is happening as you're adding new images, as opposed to a separate step. And I'll get into why that is in a bit. So this is the Teachable Machine Project. Um, you can go to, Teachable machine with google.com. Um, <clears throat> and um, what I'm going to do is I've already trained this. And so if I'm just standing here in the middle, it thinks it's, I've trained it to know just me standing here with kind of like a angry look on my face as orange. My hand to the left as green. My hand to the right as purple. So what I want to do is emphasize that what you can actually do is build a gesture based controller for some type of game. Um, using this technique. Now you could do this with the other way as well, but it's not something, I really looked at it as just a new way to like classify new images. But here, let's think about if I'm training a model in real time to understand that my hand is holding up on my left and my hand is holding up on my right, or I have no hands up at all. You could imagine I could control a character, a pong paddle to move left or right, and maybe up or down. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take a few videos, there's a bunch of things to get through, but that's the idea. All right, so you can play around with this website to get a sense of, this is a really nice interface. Uh, there's a ML5 version of this. Uh, uh, this is built with TensorFlow.js, ML5, which is a library built on top of TensorFlow.js. We have a similar version. All this work was done by uh, Yining Shi for ML5, and Yining Shi has been teaching a class called Machine Learning for the Web. <laughs> Um, at uh, ITP NYU, thank you so much for you tuning for allowing me to be inspired by and use your materials in these tutorials. Um, hopefully, Yining will come and be a guest again on the coding train and show some additional examples of things you can do with KNN classification. Um, and you can, I would highly recommend you look through this syllabus and examples. And there's also a whole presentation about KNN classification. That's Yining slides that you could look at. But um, what I'm going to actually follow is this article written by Nikhil Thorat, who is one of the creators of TensorFlow.js, one of the members of the uh, research team at Google, uh, Google Brain, developing TensorFlow.js. You can see here, and this is a notebook about how all of this stuff works, and I'm going to basically go through this, but not use the code here. This code, which is kind of the raw TensorFlow.js code, I encourage you to look at it and, and think about how it works. And, and you might this might be a place where you actually want to uh, get more lower level into it. But I'm going to use the new ML5 KNN classifier feature that is in the ML5 library. Now, this feature is only in the light. Um, you're going to want to make sure you're using at least version 0.2.1 of ML5. So as of version 0.2.1, the KNN classifier is part of ML5. But I will mention at the time of this recording, the documentation is not yet up on the website. But hopefully by the time this video is released as part of that playlist, um, you will find the documentation on the website ml5js.org. All right, so let's start going through this article and let's start right here at this moment of background, mobile net. Now this is mobile net, the mobile net model is something that I've used in just about almost every video up until this point. So if you've been watching the playlist, you're somewhat familiar to it. Mobile net, this is our first step, load mobile net. And mobile net is a machine learning image classification model that's been trained to recognize 1,000 classes of images. And it was trained based on a huge database of images known as ImageNet. This is typically, I've said this before, but this is a database that exists for researchers to use and try to develop machine learning algorithms with, but it's not necessarily a model that's 
just works particularly well in kind of like generic applications of image classification out in the world because it knows a lot about birds and dogs but not, any, not about a lot of other stuff that you know, appears in the world. However, it is a good basis to load, the first step one is to load this model. It's a good basis from which to ex do this feature extraction process, this transfer learning process, which we did before and we're going to do now in a different way. So the next step is to then create, uh, create what's called a feature extractor. So this, um, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna show you in the code. This is actually basically what I've done before. So this is what MobileNet does here. You can see it like can look at an image. It can tell you what the probability of a particular class like Egyptian cat, tabby cat, tiger cat, uh, <laughs> remote control apparently. There is a like almost 2% chance it's a remote control, okay. Cat, you are not a remote control to me. All right, so now I, what I have already, which is basically from my previous examples, is a sketch that loads the image from the webcam and display, displays it in the window. And I also, like I said, have a reference to the ML5 library, and I also have this feature extractor loaded. So I'm using P5, I'm connecting to the webcam, I'm using a P5 library to connect to the webcam and draw the webcam's image, and then I'm using ML5 to create a feature extractor with the mobile net model. So, now we can go back to Nikhil's article and scroll down and be like, okay, so this is actually, this is the end result, the cat softmax. So what does this mean? So, the mobile net model is a neural network that expects an input of an image. That image comes in and it's processed over a variety of different layers. So the image is like transformed and processed and twisted and turned and all of that is the neural network process which you know you'd have to refer to some of my other videos and other reference materials to understand about how more how this works underneath the hood but by the end what it gets is a big vector a big list of numbers that are all probabilities they all add up to 100 percent and if you look at that here that's what we're seeing here and we're seeing all the way over here like these classes have a very high probability so somewhere in here we're getting this like number, like 0.9, maybe we're getting 0.7, maybe we're getting uh, 0.05, and all, of the, all sorts of other numbers, they add up to 100, and 0.9 is probably this particular number is the number that corresponds to the probability of it being an Egyptian cat. So this is what MobileNet would do on its own. But this stage is called the softmax stage. Softmax is a fancy term for normalizing the output of all of this process to a set of probability values that all add up to 100%. But there is, there are stages before. One stage before, uh, the stage before is called the logits. <laughs> And I really, I spent like, by the way, before I recorded this video, I spent like a half an hour trying to figure out how to pronounce it, whether it's logits or logits. And a lot of places said logits and some other places said logits. I'm gonna go with logits, like logic or logical. But you can see, this is actually what the logits look like. It is the unnormalized, the non-normalized output of the neural network. It is a layer, I shouldn't be using my hand, I have an eraser. It is the layer right before. This is called the logits. And it, it's just like a lot of numbers. And softmax is applied to get this last output, which is good for classification. But this layer, all of these numbers, this is referred to as the features. I know I explained this in a previous video, but case this, this is useful to sort of give this another try and it's kind of, again, we haven't really gotten to, the next step is where something pretty different is going to happen. Um, this is still the same as before. And so we can look at it. This is, this is what those cat logits look like. Um, and you can notice there's peaks still around here, but there's lots of other stuff going on. And you can see uh, Nikhil writes, this is a semantic, um, semantic fingerprint of the image. Right? It is, this is basically the essence of the image, the boiled down essence, numerical essence of the image as perceived by the mobile net model. 
Um, so because an image itself, right, let's say this image, I forget what the dimensions MobileNet requires is, is like maybe 224 by 224 pixels. This is like a lot of numbers. So you could say this is the literal numeric representation of the image, is all of the RGB values of every single pixel, but that's too many numbers to work with and compare and try to make sense of the image. So this pre-trained model has already learned how to boil it down to just 1,000 numbers. And if we have 1,000 numbers, we can start to compare this image to, let's say, another image. So this is the feature extract and extraction, getting these features, that essence, the semantic, what, was, what, did, what did Nikhil write? Semantic fingerprint of the image. If I have two semantic fingerprints, of two images that are arrays of numbers, there's lots of math that I could start to apply to them. I could say, well, how similar are they? Well, how similar are they compared to uh, these other images? Or what if I were to sort of like move, interpolate between one image to another? And you've seen some of these maybe like um, uh, ar artistic visualizations of the output of neural networks as like moving through, you might hear like walking through the latent space. So this idea of like interpolating between the features of images to generate something, all this is interrelated. But here, this now finally is the moment where I can say, this is how it relates to KNN classification. Because KNN stands for K nearest neighbors. So if we get the logits for an image, I could say, well, what other images have I seen previously that this semantic fingerprint is very similar to, then this image is within that category of those images. That's K nearest neighbor. So I'm gonna wrap this up and we're gonna start implementing the code in the next video, but let's take one more step. Let's actually look and see with ML5 how easy it is to get those logits. So I'm gonna come back over here and I am going to, uh, in the, so this is my code, right? So in my code, I have the video and I have a feature extractor. The feature extractor, I'm just calling it features, is preloaded with the mobile net model. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna add mouse pressed, which is not what I'm gonna to wanna to do ultimately. And I'm gonna say features.infer video. So the infer function is the naming. I'm a, little, I'm, I'm a little unsure about this naming, but it's what the, <laughs> maybe it'll change in the API at some point, but this is the idea of inferring the logits from this particular image. So this could be a static image, but since I have the video, it's whatever the vi snapshot of the video is right now, and this could go into the logits. This is basically giving me that particular logits. And I'm gonna do something here that's gonna look weird, I'm gonna say console log logits, like shouldn't that show me just an array of numbers? Not, not exactly, but I'm gonna show it to you. Let's see what happens. So let me refresh this. Okay, the model is loaded. Now I'm gonna click and you see, what? Oh, what? Well, this looks kind of D-type float 32. Okay, floating point numbers, there's a thousand of them. What's all this nonsense? Ah, look at all this, this looks crazy. Well, guess what? We just waited by accident, or kind of on purpose, since I did it on purpose, into tf.js territory. Now, we, we, to continue writing this code, we don't ever have to look at the tensorflow.js documentation, but this is a moment to realize, like, ML5 isn't some magical thing that exists on its own. It is operating on, on top of tensorflow.js, meaning it's managing something called a t the tensors for you. What's a tensor? A tensor is basically a fancy word for an array of numbers or a matrix of numbers. And so the logits are a tensor. It's a one dimensional array of all those numbers. So they are actually a tensor. I can actually look at those values in the console by saying logits, I can actually say logits.print. So let me do that now. And if I click here now, you're gonna see there it is. Now it's not printing it all out, but you can see like, oh, that looks like a, an array of numbers. And another way I could do it is I could say uh, console.log logits data sync. So data sync is a function. These are functions that are part of tensorflow.js. And um, you can go back and look at my tensorflow.js videos as background where I go through them this more specifically. This is a function that gives me that data as a regular array. So last, Step here would be to do this, click, and there you go. This is 
the, this, these are the logits. This is the digital fingerprint of that image. So we are now ready. We now, hopefully, from watching this video, you understand me a little bit about what Canon classification might be, but that's what I'm gonna get into, that you're loading MobileNet, the pre-trained model, you're creating a feature extractor which knows how to pull out the logits of, 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 the, um, of the mobile net model with a given input image. And then we're passing in an image from a video and instead of getting the classification, getting just that digital fingerprint. And that semantic digital fingerprint, this is exactly what we're going to do in the next video uh, to train a model, a KM and classification model. All right, so if you wanna keep watching, then keep going in this playlist. If the video doesn't exist yet, it's because I'm still working on it, but it'll be there soon. Bye.